an empty cup. Fabulous. And I'm currently on a project about networks. Hardware in front of me, which is connected to the network. And my computer is connected to Wi-Fi on the same network. Let's send a message to the hardware. And I'll write coffee. Okay, sending then parsing data over Ethernet. Done. Now, what about that coffee? Perfect. Hey folks, it's B from Ikri, your host for today's episode. It is the end of the year, so today is going to be a relaxing introduction to the subject. I will use Necto, I will use an empty jar and coffee notifier to showcase how you can send information through the means of an Ethernet cable. In essence, by using network equipment of my company, I send Ethernet-based information from my computer to the microcontroller and as a result, TFT display device confirms the transaction. Well, how does the project look like? Let's stop for a bit. A computer, a device in this context, is sending some data over the network wirelessly, and it sends it to a development board, a host in this context, which has Ethernet cable plugged in into its RJ45 connector. That is it. That's the philosophy of this episode. How did I send data from my computer? Well, I used Nectar's terminal tool. I knew the IP address and the port number of the development board. And of course, I knew the IP address of my computer. There is a possibility you are wondering how did I know the IP address and port number of the dev port. Well, port is easy. It's manually configured. See? Port 7. And by IANA standards, port number 7 is used as an echo protocol. Okay, that was about the port. What about the IP address part? DHCP server, which is on a network router, gave an IP address to the DHCP client, which is on the microcontroller side. You can get the actual IP address by reading the USB URT output. Of course, make sure to establish connection in the first place. But beware, source and destination devices must be visible to each other. As you can see, those two IP addresses are in different subnets. But the subnet mask, which is configured by the router of my company is 255.255.2540, which is slash 23 subnet mask in the language of networking people, which finally implies that those two, my computer and the development board, can be successfully seen over the network, which is important thing for this project to succeed. I could have used PuTTY as well and connect to the host by using hostname, not the IP address. And the last question would be, how did I collect and process that on the host? I needed two things, which are integral parts of the Necto. MicroSDK alongside Cyclone TCP, an open source network stack, which got integrated into MicroSDK stack. That is the first feature. The second feature I used in this project is the designer feature, which helped me display stuff on a TFT screen. Let's elaborate more on those two. In the beginning of this episode, you saw an image on TFT screen once I successfully sent data over the network from my laptop to a dev board's microcontroller. This rather interesting screen will be shown only if correct string sequence is received. In this case, in this project, this string sequence, this keyword is basically coffee. Once I type in coffee in this terminal, the screen will pop up. It feels like this is some kind of an interrupt, and it looks like it's an interrupt-based logic, and it actually is. Here is the interrupt request, the interrupt routine. Let's check out what is in the main function now. Echo server in infinite loop, which basically is sending back every single string I sent towards microcontroller or network. Okay, two more functionalities. Initialize Ethernet stack and initialize designer, or prepare everything for TFT screen to work properly, to be precise. Interrupt is needed, and it is going to be in a time interval of 1 millisecond, and it is going to have the highest priority, level 15, because I do not want something to slide in and take over the TFT screen. Test init debug is about configuring UART module of a microcontroller in order for us to get debugging option via UART terminal. Test init stack is all about configuring network interface. Test init client DHCP functionality is self-explanatory, and we already discussed echo server functionality. Okay, and how you can enable Cyclone TCP Ethernet stack within your Nectar project? Jump into library manager and you'll find it. Just make sure your hardware setup is based on GCC ARM compiler. So, coffee notifier. Why would someone make coffee notifier? There are chat applications like Slack or Microsoft Teams, and you can automate sending business messages over the office network via Slack's extensive API, for example. This automation I did, the coffee notifier application, is for different purposes, for different environments. First of all, we are using microcontroller, not the CPU, for displaying data, which came directly from the Nectar's terminal tool. 
Typically, having projects like this with microcontrollers in them are more affordable. Second thing, this prototype, this coffee notifier, can be produced in a smaller form factor, which means you can build the device as small as your TFT dimensions are and install it wherever is needed, on a countertop, on a wall, you name it. The advantage is the physical size of the project. Third thing, you can, you can send whatever data you want as long as you have Ethernet access in the room. For example, data for coffee shops, industrial halls, hotel lobbies, it's a smart home solution as well. The point is, this project is affordable, could be small in size, and could be adjusted for the vast majority of human purposes. Okay guys, that's it. Use the network in your embedded design as much as you can because it's really useful. Thanks for watching.